I'm one of those who was born in the transition period of America. I grew up in a segregated America. I remember having to drink at the colored water fountain. I remember when I couldn't stay at a hotel in the South. I remember when I graduated high school, despite my high SAT scores, my grade point average, I was fourth in my class, all, st all city basketball player. I couldn't play at Duke or Kentucky by law. I couldn't play at Alabama, Arkansas. That changed. That changed in the 1960s with the public accommodation bill. That changed in 1965 with the voting rights bill, when for the first time my community was ensured the right to vote. That's only been less than three decades ago. We haven't told that story. We have never told the story. What we have told is an intellectual lie. And that is that America was a land of plenty and promise for everyone. And for most it was. If you came on the immigrant ship from Ireland, Poland, uh, England, Italy, it was. But not on the slave ship. It was our Holocaust. It was our land of Egypt and oppression. And freedom was only three decades ago. And even the virtuous North, with its great institutions, only became liberated after the country did in the 1960s. And we haven't told that story. We haven't told it to ourselves because we don't want to face the pain of it. Secondly, we haven't told it to this generation that has come up in the last 30 years who know not the days of Egypt. And thus, they don't understand why there's a debate, why there are some structural remedies out there trying to redress 350 years in this country. And what we continue to do is we continue to give them statements about tendencies of people. Uh, statements about, uh, well, you know, their family structure. The bottom line is we know what works. Here's what works, folks. One, you've got to fight injustice wherever it is, and you've got to come down hard on it. And none of this garbage about people's tendencies. That stereotyping which forms the basis for anti-Semitism, sexism, racism, and all the other isms. Two, what we've got to do is sensitize people in leadership positions, which also includes police forces around this country. And whenever we've had leadership that has done that, we have found that the racial conflict between police and the people have subsided. I don't know what's going to happen in L.A., but I can tell you what happened in Philadelphia when Willie Williams became chief of police. Crime started to go down, and the report of racial incidences started to cease. Attacks on all policemen, black and white, went down. Third thing we've got to do is we've got to widen the doorway of opportunity for all of our people. And not because of some moralistic uh, affirmative action reason. That's a good enough reason. You know, Martin Luther King used to say, you're going to pay the interest on all of this debt that you've created as a result of 350 years of slavery and segregation. And we're paying some of the painful interest right now. But I'm not talking about that. I want to talk about something that I was trying to get at when I talked about California and the riots. This country is going through a revolution. California is the leading edge of it. Miami, Texas, New York City, where in the next century, 85% of all the new workers that will enter our workforce will be women, minorities, and new immigrants. One, two thirds of those minorities are gonna be African Americans. Let me tell you what that means, folks. It means that if we're gonna compete in a global village, and that's what we're in now, where we're no longer the economic goliath. We have got to develop productivity, those hands and those minds of everybody in the society. So we can't afford any bigots. We can't afford any stereotypes. We can't afford any doorways and walls any longer. Not for religious and moral reasons, and that's good enough to bring them down, and that's why we brought them down mainly in the 1960s. But if we're going to prosper, all of us, as we face the challenge from Europe and the Pacific Rim, we've got to do something. What's the best way I've found to do that, besides those other three things I tell you? Education. Education. Education.